Uh, thanks for coming to this Introducing SolidWorks PDM webinar. Uh, my name is Jared Trotter. I'm an application engineer here at Concepts in Production. And today I just want to show you a little bit about SolidWorks PDM and some of the reasons why it can be a really good choice for your organization. To start out with, uh, of course, SolidWorks PDM stands for uh, Product Data Management. Uh, there's a, about three topics that I actually want to go over with you today. And the first of those topics is going to be the familiar environment that SolidWorks PDM functions in. So that it provides a really nice learning curve for those who are transitioning to it. And then the second topic will be the organization that SolidWorks PDM provides and uh, how it can provide a really nice workflow for you. And then lastly, I'll take a look at accessing information in PDM and how uh, that can be really nice for you. So this first topic here of a familiar environment, uh, many times the concern with switching to a new software is the learning curve. But with SolidWorks PDM, it's integrated into Windows Explorer. And I'll just go ahead and transition over here uh, to the software to show you uh, what that actually looks like. Coming over here um, you know, to my desktop of this PDM add-in here, the you know, taskbar uh, probably looks really familiar to most people. And what you'll do is just log in and log off um, from there as a particular user. And what's going to happen is that you'll be able to go uh, to the PDM vault. And the vault is where all of that information is stored securely to provide you with um, a nice secure you know, location for all of your files. So for instance, if I already logged in here as an engineer and I go to one of these folders, I'll go ahead and turn on the details here. And one of the nice things with PDM is the little preview window that you have here. And not only does it give you a three-dimensional view of your part, but you don't even have to actually have SOLIDWORKS installed in order to view these CAD files. Uh, it's simply necessary to have e-drawings downloaded and you'll be able to see all of those. Now, when you go to uh, look at a file and you open it just like you would from Windows Explorer, uh, double-clicking it or uh, right-click to open, and what you're going to get a prompt for is to check out or uh, not check out the files. When a file is checked out, that means that you are the only person who can edit that. Other people can see those files, but they can't make edits and save those changes. Uh, so that prevents multiple people from working on a file and then saving over some changes that you know, someone else may have made. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check out all of these different files. You have the option to check out the top level assembly um, or just certain parts. So I'll go ahead and check all of these different files out. And you'll notice here in SolidWorks that there's a PDM add-in here over to the right. And that gives you information about uh, your assembly as well as the parts that compose it. And if we could just go ahead and click on it, you'll notice that uh, we have some icons here that light up. This is where you can check that file back in once you've made those changes um, or check it out if you're just viewing it. Now going back over here to Windows Explorer with this particular assembly that we're looking at, uh, we'll notice here in this structure that uh, some of these files uh, have different states and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, but what I want to do right now is take these uh, two files and just kind of give you a preview of what we'll do in our next stage. Uh, all of these files are approved. Uh, these are under editing and these two are undergoing a change. And what I'm going to do logged in here as the engineer is just to uh, right click and then I'm going to change the status of them. Um, so we want to actually change the state. And in order to do that, let me actually uh, log off as this particular user and we'll log back in as uh, the engineer. So going back uh, to those files, uh, bringing up those uh, details, we can see that uh, these are under editing and they are checked out uh, by the other user. So as I said before, um, once a file is checked out, then they can actually be um, removed by the other user 
or by another user, they can uh, only be viewed. Uh, now that applies not only to SolidWorks applications, but it also applies to uh, products like Windows, um, Microsoft Word, pardon me, and Excel. So here in uh, Microsoft Word, this is a document that is in the PDM vault, and there's a PDM, SolidWorks PDM tab here at the top that allows you to do a couple of other things. The first of which I'll point out is this nice option to select in Windows Explorer. And clicking on that shows you exactly where this document is. You know, so you don't have to do a save as operation just to see uh, where the file is. There's a one click button for that. Additionally, much like your SolidWorks files, you also have the option to check in and check out you know, those different documents as you're working on them and you want to make changes. Uh, this might apply to a project checklist or um, an ECO, something like that. So you can see that within SOLIDWORKS and within these very familiar Microsoft applications that um, these are things that you've seen before and most people uh, have experience working with. So in that sense, uh, PDM is actually going to be very easy for Windows users because it's something that uh, you're familiar with and it's integrated very tightly uh, with SOLIDWORKS and with uh, Windows applications. Now, moving a little bit further, let's talk about the organization of PDM and how it actually uh, composes a nice workflow for you. And to illustrate that, uh, you may think in terms of a manufacturing environment, usually you have a plant layout that um, goes from one stage to another such that you have a product that moves um, in a very linear fashion. Uh, things are added to the product, things are uh, you know, manufactured, you may have uh, machining, um, things that are taking place. And one thing that's just kind of nicely built into the physicality of the structure is that, for instance, stage three isn't connected to stage one. Uh, so stage three can't um, edit things prematurely. They can't you know, manufacture things prematurely. And so it moves in this nice linear fashion until it gets to your final stage and then you have a finished product. Now that works really well when you're creating your physical part, but what about before that? So a lot of times you'll have you know, some engineers, a draftsman, maybe a manager who all have access to your CAD data um, that's shared on a network. But since everyone has access to it all at the same time, how do you then create a structure out of that? How do you create um, a workflow when everyone has access to those files all at the same time? Well, that's where PDM comes in and where it creates um, a really uh, nice structured flow for you. So this picture here is from the administration tool that comes with uh, PDM. And a few things to note here, I want to draw your attention to two particular aspects of this. Uh, the first of which are these rectangular blocks that you'll see. Uh, for instance, the first one, like under editing, these are known as states. So if a file is in a particular state, it's kind of in this uh, static uh, position. For instance, under editing, uh, the files can be change the engineers can continue to work on them um, until they get uh, what they need and then they can actually push that forward uh, to management or to whoever's going to approve those and whether they're pushing them through to management or it's approved and a change needs to be made the process of moving those files forward um, is known as a transition so for instance if something has been submitted for approval and then it passes uh, then that process is known as a transition and these states and transitions work together in your organization to mirror uh, the, the type of workflow that you already have. Additionally, these states and transitions uh, can be programmed such that uh, they have permissions associated with certain users or certain groups. For instance, your engineers uh, might have a certain set of permissions that enable them to edit or view certain files and then so on and so forth with those who work in manufacturing or uh, who work in management. And once you've implemented the structure to mirror your organization's needs, now all of a sudden you've got um, a really nice structure uh, for your CAD data that can go uh, through your workflow and it'll be a very you know, efficient process. Now, this is just kind of a diagram, so let's actually see that in action uh, just a little bit. So, i come back over here uh, to PDM and gonna have to do a bit of logging off and logging back in here 
So I'll first log off as uh, that user. I'm going to log back in as the person who is, I'm actually editing that. Come to our details. And these files here are um, all local. So what we'll do, these are all checked out. So I'll just go ahead and check all of these in. To uh, make them for editing. It's telling me that these are um, actually open in this application so I'll go ahead and close that out and once I've done that I should be able to go ahead and check those back in so right click will uh, check all those in And now what I want to do is actually uh, log in as the engineer who's going to make some changes and try to push those through uh, to get approved. So coming uh, back over here to those files, uh, we can see here under the state, um, like I mentioned earlier, these are already approved and perhaps I want to get these um, you know, changed. So if I click on those two, I can right click and now change the state of those and submit them uh, for approval. So I'll submit that change and you can leave notes uh, really quick or they can be a little bit more in depth. And so now we see that the state of these two files has changed, change uh, pending approval. And of course, this user doesn't have uh, the necessary permissions to approve their own work. Generally, that's part of the workflow. So we'll kind of replicate an engineering manager taking a look at these files because that'll kind of be the next step. So we'll uh, log off as that user. And we'll log in as, uh, say, the manager. And I have that set up as myself here. So we'll go back um, to those uh, same files. We see changes uh, pending approval. And as manager, um, I have the option to do um, a couple of things. Um, and as we're opening those, you'll see that there's this um, SOLIDWORKS PDM notification down here at the bottom. Uh, once you click on that, it actually you know, tells you what these changes are. And again, that's set up in those permissions because when those files move to a particular state, uh, then um, a notification is sent to those to the necessary people. So I hear that change comment that I put in is the design okay, and I see these two parts as the engineering manager. I can click it from here, or I can go ahead here in Windows Explorer. So I'll go ahead and click on those, and uh, by right-clicking, I can choose from the change state to either um, you know, approve this change or say that more editing is needed you know, if I don't uh, want to approve those. Uh, but I'll go ahead and I click on change approval indicate that um, it looks good and click OK and now uh, those two uh, files are approved. So going back uh, to kind of the PowerPoint here we can see kind of the organization that PDM provides um, because you have controlled access to all of these different files such that only the people who need to work on certain parts um, have the ability to and other people who may just need uh, read-only access permissions like that can be set up as well. Uh, now going on to our last uh, topic here I'm going to really briefly look at accessing uh, the information for your different CAD data. And just looking at uh, Windows Explorer here, uh, you notice that there's uh, quite a bit of information here that we've only uh, touched on thus far. Uh, but the primary one that I want to show you is this data card. 
Now this data card can be filled in manually or it can be made to draw information in directly from the part file. And what that enables you to do is see the necessary information about your part uh, with none that you don't need. So the way that this is set up is from the administration tool that's built into PDM. And we'll just log in here as the administrator and take a look at this particular card. There are several cards that can be set up, uh, but this one in particular is the part. So this is associated with um, you know, all the parts in the vault. So if I expand that and look at the cards, I'll scroll down here to look at SolidWorks part card. And sure enough, here it is the design card or the data card um, as is reflected here in Windows Explorer. And these different boxes can be moved around, um, deleted, or additional ones added um, so that you have, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, just the information uh, that you need, whether it be your material or the project name, project number, uh, things like that. And it gives you access to um, just anything that you might uh, need associated with your part file. So. We can see that when it comes to accessing your information in PDM, uh, that is very succinct, that you can get the information uh, that you need and none of the ones that you don't. Um, whether you're just previewing those within Windows Explorer or you're actually uh, working on the part, uh, that can be a really quick way to access um, the necessary information about your CAD data. What we've gone through today, just kind of in summary, uh, we've looked at how uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM provides a familiar environment, making it really easy and natural uh, for Windows users who are already familiar with SOLIDWORKS, um, who are familiar with Microsoft applications like uh, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. Um, it's very easy for them to manage uh, that kind of data. Um, in terms of organization, of course, it can be kind of you know, cluttered trying to work just with Windows Explorer without any kind of data management software to kind of manage a workflow. Uh, but PDM gives you that controlled access with workflows so that um, you have individuals only making the changes that they need to. And finally, when it comes to accessing your information, then that can that is uh, really succinct as all your information in one place. And the final thing that I want to point out, um, wrapping up the presentation, is one of our customers uh, Taylor, this is in Louisville, Mississippi. They've actually implemented the PDM software fairly recently, and they had a couple of things uh, to say about it that are worth noting. Uh, the first is that they noticed a huge improvement in their file management, particularly in the ease of moving and renaming SolidWorks files. So if you're in a large organization uh, like they are, uh, moving and renaming files can be fairly difficult, but with PDM, it's quite easy. And they also noted that um, once they got past that initial learning curve, that SOLIDWORKS functions best for them when it's integrated uh, with PDM. That's what the Quentin Stevenson of Taylor Machine Works noted. So um, PDM, a very powerful, uh, very useful tool that's um, actually quite easy considering all of the functionality that's contained in it. So I hope that um, this webinar was um, useful. Hopefully that you got a little bit more information about PDM and that'll be a conclusion of the presentation.